my loves, so for the remainder of Vlogtober, it's going to be a little bit more kind of clips from across the week rather than daily vlogs. I feel like I've rambled a lot this month and I just want to make sure each video is sort of worthy of being a standalone video. So that's what we're going to do for the remainder of Vlogtober. Still got a couple things that I definitely want to do with you but a couple packages just arrived so I thought I would um, show you them because I'm kind of excited about both in completely different ways. First up I got a proof through from Melville House. First of all the cover is incredible it is mr breakfast by jonathan carroll and this is coming out on ja in january so a little while to go but i was just really um intrigued by the um press release actually it looks like it could be a really promising one so i've never heard of jonathan carroll but apparently he is a literary fantasy author and this is quite the list loved by the likes of neil gaiman joe hill stephen king jonathan latham ellen datlow peter straub pat conroy and stanislaw lem carroll's work is often compared to borge marquez and lewis carroll so that's quite the selection of names and indeed the quote on the front of here is actually by Gaiman so that's quite the endorsement and then there's even a little like note from the executive editor of Melville House about how much he loves Jonathan Carroll. He's got a new book out. Graham Patterson's life has hit a dead end. His career as a comedian is failing. The love of his life recently broke up with him and he has no idea what to do next. With nothing to lose he buys a new car and hits the road planning to drive across country and figure out his next moves before reaching California. California. But along the way, Patterson does something his old self would never even have considered. He gets tattooed by a brilliant tattoo artist in North Carolina. This decision sets off a series of extraordinary events that changes his life forever in ways he could never have imagined. Among other things, Patterson is gifted with the ability to see in real time three different lives that are available to him. It's a dazzling, absorbing and deeply moving novel. So, I'm excited about the sound of that one actually. I hope that it lives up to <laughs> its wonderful press release information and um, I'm definitely putting it to the top of my list for whatever roundup I'm doing next. <laughs> this is my other package. I'm very excited about this. So I bought a hip, a hippie chick hip seat I think they're called. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, basically it's a seat for your heavy child to sit on um super easy obviously it literally just goes around your waist so you literally just stick it on and then if your toddler or older baby is having i think they need to be six months they need to be able to sit is having a clingy a clingier moment than normal you can just sit them on this and it's supposed to help obviously you don't have to like <sighs> stick your hip out do your back in um, and it helps carry some of their weight um, or distribute their weight differently. Um, I'm very excited about this. It is definitely like just wouldn't deal with a carrier. It's not the same with a carrier as well, the way you carry them and the way they feel, you know, they want to be on your hip. So I'm very interested to try this out. I got this brown colour because it was between the brown and the black for me. Oh, I can rest my hand on it when I'm vlogging. Yes, my arm even. It's between the brown and the black, but the brown was on sale and it was only £25 compared to, I think it's close to £40 normally, so it's not the cheapest baby item you'll ever buy, but it could be worth it, so I'm going to give it a go later on, see how we get on, but yeah, she's, or, or, like, when we walked to the coffee shop the other day, she walked for a bit, but then she wanted to be carried, so I think this sort of thing is good for when you don't really want to take the buggy, especially as she's getting a bit older and she is able to walk, some distance but you expect them to also want to be carried some of the way as well or the airport i can imagine this being great for i am very excited about this but basically yeah they just sit on that and i'm hoping i can convince her to hold on to me as well so maybe i could even be a little bit more hands-free um obviously you can just put your arm behind them as well so you're not going to be it's not going to be like wow i can do so many things with this on but it just means they can rest on something and you're not quite so burdened, I suppose, with holding all of their, all of their weight with your arms. So yeah, very intrigued by this. Um, obviously you need to strap it, like you need to strap it in you know, whatever, but I'll let you know how I get on with it. It reminds me a little bit of my breastfeeding pillow, <laughs> which I was very attached to. So um, that's good, I think. But anyway, my loves, I'm going to love you and leave you. I don't know when the next clip will be, but I'll see you soon. Okay, my loves, I promise... 
this whole video is not going to be me going through various packages that I've received but um, I'm shooting a free people job today the one that I mentioned before and I just wanted to show you the bits in case you're interested and link them up for you so I'm wearing these really nice green trousers they kind of look linen-y anyway I really like them they're kind of like a straight leg got them in the green colour they also do them in black and stuff but the green colour is slightly kind of weathered on the front I don't know if you can see that it's slightly kind of lighter on the front really really like these um, I'm going to be wearing my docks by the way but they're a little bit muddy so I don't really put them on up here um, my dock the low ones the new ones then I've got this very comfy half button sweater this is very soft actually it's also quite long I've tucked it in a fair bit for this particular look but it is quite long um, and is very very cozy I've got my free people perfect tee on underneath I did get a new t-shirt as well but it didn't end up working color wise but I actually really like that t-shirt as well I'm sure you'll see me wear it in a different context and then this rather lovely jacket which is kind of very cozy but slightly cropped so it's kind of good for different forms of layering different kinds of outside temperatures it's kind of got a very light kind of ribbing style i guess then i've got the black hood and yeah it's very very cozy i like it a lot so that's my look but yes i'm waiting for zach he's been at the house this morning and then we're gonna head out and shoot hope you're all doing well we're a little bit further into the week now despite what i said about the packages i definitely have more packages to show you which i'm excited about i have been a very spoilt person and i have another very exciting package from monica villada this is not part of my work with them so this is gifting from them obviously i did a video containing some um sponsorship for them uh, a few videos ago but this is just gifting there's no obligation for me to post but I'm very excited about it so I wanted to share it with you and both these pieces are from the Kate Young collection so you know that nice ring that I got that I showed in that video the green onyx ring so so gorgeous I've been wearing it basically every day since so that's part of the Kate Young collection and they have sent me a couple more pieces from that collection and my discount code now applies to that collection as well. I think it might have been um, exempted before, but it now applies. So if you would like to use the discount code on these pieces, then you can now do so. Um, first of all, the first piece comes in this rather large box. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to open it up. <gasps> Look at that. How gorgeous is that? It's a tennis necklace um, in green onyx and it's variable sizing which I'm very excited about so hopefully we can get it to sit in just the right spot look how beautiful it is look how gorgeous that is they do this one in a yellow stone as well I believe but let me get it on so so pretty I think it will look nice contrasted against this kind of purpley top Actually, so I might wear it today but this would make the most gorgeous gift the drama of that big box I know we're coming up to that time of year and I hope that some of you have managed to use my code for family and friends as well as yourselves oh my god why can I not get it done up at that oh it's just shining so beautifully there how pretty is that I am obsessed oh, just look at the way it sits so nice i also have a pair of the earrings i think which i'm very excited about too look at these they're nice kind of like chunky hoops i think they're gonna look really cool on let me get them on so 
super excited about um, that package coming through the door. Huge thank you to Monica Vinader for sending through such lovely pieces. It will be on the screen now and it will be in the description box as well. Let's see what these look like in. I think they're gonna look really, really cool. Oh yes, how nice are those? Obsessed. Right, my loves, what was I thinking in my brain? Let me finish up with the packages and go and get the last couple of packages that I have to show you. First up, we have a very lovely package from Edinburgh Gin. And I just have to show you these boxes. Look at those. How gorgeous are those? So, so nice. Um, I like gin, I'm a big gin and tonic drinker if I'm gonna have like um, a simple mixed drink. I also like gin cocktails actually. So this is the classic bottle. Small batch distilled, made with the finest botanicals of Scotland. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these beautiful boxes. I feel like I need to use them for something, which is really like, my grandma coming out in me because she would not be able to throw these away either. I'll give those a try at some point. We don't drink huge amounts at home these days, but it'd be good to get out for guests and stuff. And I have had this package sitting around since September and it got lost in a pile of crap, <laughs> which is very easy up here at the moment. So I haven't even shown it to you, but just have a look this. It's a package from Diptyque. I've only been dreaming of this my entire life basically and it's a 34 package um, which is one of my favourite scents. I wear it a lot um, so but yeah I can't believe I haven't um, properly even opened this and unpacked it. I think I got too excited about it. I was like you know when you're just like I can't even look at this until I can fully focus on it. So it's taken me this long to get around, bit, around to it, but it is um, celebrating like a whole collection of um, 34 scented home stuff, like candles, room sprays, reed diffusers, car diffusers. We have the 34 car diffuser actually in our car. We've got a scented oval. I think this is the type of thing you're supposed to like hang in your car or like hang from something. Designed for use in small spaces such as dresses, closets, on door handles. Okay, interesting. As soon as you get the plastic open on a diptyque, um, oh, it smells so good. On a diptyque uh, box, it starts smelling really strongly. Oh wow, look at that! It's much bigger than I expected. Um, oh, gorgeous! I'll definitely use that in the new house. I think in our wardrobe room, maybe. So. Love that. I do love this smell so much. And then we've got this box. And inside, I think it's the diffuser, home fragrance diffuser. And look at that. Such a lovely set. Thank you so much, Diptyque, for sending those out. I couldn't be more excited to receive a package from them. Today, my loves, I'm sending out a few more bits, bits that we've sold. Then I'm going to have rest of the day preparing for book club which is this Sunday which I'm very excited about to chat about Stoner which is almost almost universally beloved I think um, for our book club so can't wait to discuss that we've also been voting this week and the vote closes tonight on books for the next couple of book clubs um, for November and December and I won't reveal the winners yet because it could still change have you been using ranked choice voting? And it's been very interesting actually, and I think it is a good method to pick a book. I think I might do a more focused list next time. Basically, I give the list of books and then um, everyone ranks them. So ultimately you should end up with winners that have been maybe not always ranked number one, but near like the top end of everyone's rankings. So that was kind of the thought process behind that rather than like just a standard vote. I've been enjoying watching that all this week as well because it's kind of like a race <laughs> and the top ones do keep changing and stuff like because with every ranking, like every person that fills it in does change ever so slightly. Um, and I'll let you know the winners tomorrow, probably. Anyway, my loves, so let me show you my outfit today because I'm wearing a new pair of trousers. Which one have I got me, actually? So this is them. I think they're from a brand called Latech. 
if I'm wrong, I'll write it on screen and obviously they'll be linked up down below. But how nice are these and so comfortable. They're like these cord trousers, very nice wide leg, very comfortable, elasticated waist with a tie as well, just for a bit of extra interest. Kind of slouchy looking, but also quite elegant. Um, and I am loving them and I'm wearing them today. Loves, welcome back. It's been a few days since I talked to you and today it is actually Halloween, the final day of October. So obviously you will be watching this um, after Halloween, but I hope you had a lovely time if you are a Halloween fan. I confess I'm not, never been super into Halloween. I like it as a kind of background, uh, autumnal sort of vibe, but yeah. I had such an odd week last week, as you all know, well maybe you all don't know, but I talked about before about my PMS and stuff, and usually the moment my period hits, the kind of fatigue and um, mood problems go away pretty quickly, but last week it just seemed to intensify them. I felt so tired all week and just like out of my body. I just felt very, like I was kind of very spacey. I don't know if it was also maybe a little bit because it had been a very busy few months and I had decided that I wasn't gonna daily vlog as you can tell from this vlog. Um, I was gonna, gonna put clips together of the last few days of October and I think <laughs> my brain just shut down like, we stopped editing as well, even though of course we should still have been editing and getting videos uploaded. I don't know what happened, but I think my brain maybe just went into full rest mode. Maybe that was it, but <laughs> whatever happened. Um, I had a funny week last week, but I'm back and I'm feeling better. I'm gonna push myself to feel better because I want to do some bits this week. But yeah, it's the final day of October. We haven't even carved our pumpkins or anything. You know, sometimes with these seasonal activities, you can feel like you really need to do them to the detriment sometimes of your own um, feelings and what you need to do. And I just have not had the energy to carve a pumpkin. That is a very physically intense job, you know? Um, and you feel like you need to have, you need to have this organized fun. And the last few days, I just haven't had the urge to carve a pumpkin. So we might do it tonight. We might not do it tonight. We'll see how we go. Obviously, if it doesn't happen today, I don't think I'm gonna carve pumpkins after Halloween. That seems a little ridiculous. But I did display the pumpkins downstairs and I will show you those later on. So we have been looking at our pumpkins at least. But yes, this morning I have mostly been just attending to little bits and bobs on the Patreon, I've been on the Discord, just chatting away because we had our meeting for Stoner yesterday, which was so lovely, such a nice chat about such a wonderful book. If you haven't read Stoner by John Williams, I think many of us in the book club would uh, recommend it to you. Such a nice novel, beautifully written um, about a professor living in the early part of the 20th century and his life basically and it's quite a quiet beautiful book just about life and what it means to have a life uh, and all the little moments that make one up so definitely definitely recommend that book also lovely for this time of year um, and we had our meeting yesterday and it was so so nice so yeah I've just been um, chatting about that on the discord putting up the recording for that and yes, I am still trucking through House of Leaves. Um, I have to say, I'm not loving it. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Let me just sort this out. It's one of those novels which, within some male circles who... How am I going to put this? <laughs> it's one of those novels that I think could be read wrong by men. I haven't got to the end of the book yet, so I don't know what the final conclusions are but the female characters I don't know whether they might there might be like a kind of redemptive arc for them in general but it's very easy I think it'd be very easy if you were a man to interpret this book in a kind of misogynist way and I think sometimes despite the subtext, whatever the subtext might be, because I haven't made any conclusions on that, I'm always wary of books like that, especially in this kind of quite nerdy category. 
um, because it's a very clever book and it's using a lot of academia and stuff. And so I'm always wary of that because it feels like... Um, it feels like, I think, to some male readers probably, like a clever guy sort of confirming misogynist views. Do you know what I'm saying? It's quite a, it's quite a nuanced feeling I get from a book sometimes, but this is one of those books that feels like it could so easily be read wrong. Uh, and so I'm not loving it from that perspective. There's definitely some ill treatment of the female characters, whether the author is aware of that and the book is aware of that very much might be the case but I just it blocks me from loving a book I also said this on the discord as well that it definitely feels I think Erica said it felt, feels overworked I think that's a really good word for it I love playful books books that do lots of stuff I mean I can think of Alistair Gray and Jeff Vandermeer being um, some amazing authors that do interesting things with the form of the text and or if we're thinking about footnotes you can't help because there's a lot of footnotes in this book you can't help but think of like Susanna Clarke and Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell and I love books that experiment with things but in this case I feel just slightly that it's too far and of course you can't really say something's too far because that's just the type of book this is. It does rely heavily on like academic speak. Um, it is taking the mick out of academics. Um, and so it is overworked probably on purpose, but definitely for me, it's getting in the way, I think of my enjoyment of it and, and the story. Um, I feel like he has a good story there, but it's just a little too much. A little bit of show ponying as well just a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does, but it is slightly getting in the way of my enjoyment of the book. But it's definitely a very clever book and um, I'm going to finish it, but it is taking me a little while. It's a hefty tome. I've got so many good things on my TBR. We also decided um, like the results came through for book club for November and December. We did like a big vote and we picked The Sellout by Paul Beatty and A Thousand Acres by Jane Smiley for our next two books, which I'm so excited about. If you would like to join us, you don't need to be on the Patreon. You can just read along with us, watch the video when it comes out um, and hear my comments and comment on, on the YouTube video yourself. You don't have to join the Patreon to take part at all. But we will be chatting over there about those two books, along with various other buddy reads that I'm going to be running um, through November and December, which I'm really, really excited about. So I am kind of keen to get through House of Leaves quite quickly now. Um, I think I really need to make some big chunks of time for it this week um, and get through it. Okay, I'm deep in the labyrinth section of this book. <laughs> And if you see me pick up my phone a lot, it's because I am searching for footnotes. This whole bit is written, like, flipped. So I just took a picture of it and flipped it so I could read it. Um, so, lots going on here. this book and it's what I know about the author as well. I think it's borrowing heavily from like Baudrillard and Derrida and deconstruction and post-structuralism and it's got a lot of that influence in there and it's particularly like in the way it's looking at the like documentary style because it's about a fictional documentary that doesn't exist and I don't particularly find those theories they don't interest me hugely I find them like strangely and therefore dangerously like apolitical I'm much more of a don't want to get too academic here but I'm much more <laughs> 
new materialist. They feel very kind of old white guy to me. <laughs> yes, that's another element of this that I, I feel like I am hoping for it to be a slightly different book as I'm reading. But yeah, its influences are not my favourite kind of areas of theory. And obviously the theory is quite heavy in it. So wanted to note that. However, I will admit now I'm through that kind of labyrinthy section. There are some bits which really just show the genius of this book and just some glimpses of really great and interesting thought. So it's definitely in there. It's just kind of mixed up with stuff that I'm less keen on, I guess. But when I get one, I love it. It definitely has a sense of discovery, I think, this book. Right, my loves. Decision was made. Um, for us because Inez uh, did some carving with our nanny. So she they carved this little one and then um, they also hollowed, hollowed out this big one. So the, the hard bit has been completed. And Zach's now going to carve this extremely quickly just in case the children of our area <coughs> I want to do it. Want to, well, I can show you some inspiration from the Patreon Discord. Do you want to see what other people have done? Okay, Hadley, we're stealing one of your ideas. <laughs> we're going with a kind of wibbly wobbly mouth design. So yeah, Zach's gonna feverishly carve right now and get them set up outside. Anyway, don't our other pumpkins look cute? Obviously, two pumpkins have been removed from the display now, but don't they look cute? It's a nice display. I think we can keep this going through into November for sure. Halloween is officially complete. Now we have to put them outside, but it is raining. Loving, suddenly really enjoying the House of Leaves. Um, the pacing picked up a lot. We were back in the house the majority of the time from about 180 pages on. Basically, once you get out of the labyrinth chapter that I was in, um, the pacing just picked up a lot and I've been really, really it was kind of unputdownable for a bit there and I really didn't think that was going to happen because I was getting a bit, I was losing heart a little bit with it. So I can stop being so grumpy now about it and I'm definitely, definitely enjoying it a little bit more again. Long may it continue. Yeah, the footnotes massively reduced and there's this kind of, it's not really secondary, I think it's pretty important, like a framing story, this kind of character that keeps coming in um, and adding stuff to the kind of main text and a lot of his stuff was where a lot of the misogyny and stuff was happening and it was a lot of like club kid hedonistic stuff which I just never find particularly interesting when I'm reading but his narration has shifted slightly more into the weird and creepy which I'm enjoying so yes all round improvement on House of Leaves from about that 180 page, I'm now on like 300 or something because there's a lot of blank space as well. Making good progress, I think I'm almost halfway through the book now. So that is good. Would love to finish that by the end of this week, if possible, because I would like, I want to do my book video this week and I'd like to include it in that video. Otherwise I feel like it will get lost in my brain. Other things to note, and I just wanted to say this because, well, I have finally felt, um, three out of four uh, canines of Inez's. So she has been teething this whole time, as I suspected. Um, when you Google teething, they say, oh, it's only it should be a few days around like the breaking through of the tooth that you should notice it. I've never found that to be the case. I always find it to be like a few weeks ordeal for us. It's not like she's super grumpy in the day, but I can always tell she's in discomfort at night and she eats a lot worse. Um, and it lasts for a few weeks um, until they come through properly and they have to like properly be through as well. It can't be like that. It's not just like a matter of them cutting a little bit and then everything's better. It doesn't usually work like that for us. And like I say, she always gets four at once. So yes, canines coming through. I did think though, your canines coming through on Halloween, that's a pretty Halloween-y activity. That's pretty vampiric. Um, so <laughs> Good for her, but yes, I'm pleased that I wasn't going crazy. I knew something was up, that she was feeling a lot of discomfort at night. And yeah, she feeds a lot more with me. She has a lot more milk and she has a lot less solid food. 
when she's like that. And anyway, that means once these are through, and then it can take like a couple weeks from the first cutting for them to like fully push through. Once these are through, we've only got four teeth left to go. And if they're anything like the others, they'll all come at once at some point in the next few months, probably. So yes, we're almost there. I can see the end of the road. We Once these canines are through, she will have 16 teeth and we need 20. So yes, I know that back molars are supposed to be pretty bad. Um, she did all of her kind of middle molars to, in the technical terms when we first went to America. And it was not the best time to her uh, to be teething for a few weeks, but she did and it was fine and we got through it. But anyway, my loves, I am gonna go to bed now. I will sign off properly tomorrow and do all of that. But yes, I'm gonna sign off because I'm just gonna go get in the shower Maybe Zach and I will watch something, but we're in a bit of a kind of late mode at the minute because for long and boring reasons, but I would also like to drink more house for you, so I don't know. But anyway, I will sign off properly, properly tomorrow and see you then. Hi my loves, so I just wanted to do a final clip in the daytime, not looking end of day-ish, to say a big thank you for watching Vlogtober this year. I had a really great time, obviously it wasn't our most exciting in terms of doing stuff, we're in full budget mode with the house and I'm sorry there wasn't more house actually, honestly it is just <laughs> a mud pit still over there with the kitchen extension and so much digging going on over there. I really hoped that there would be something more to show you this month but there just really hasn't been unless you want to be <laughs> slightly disappointed every time we go over that it looks much the same as it did before. There will come a time I'm hoping where <laughs> lots of changes will happen at once visually but it was such a lovely month, thank you so much for joining me and watching and taking part and thank you so much to Zach for editing all of the vlogs this year. It made such a huge difference to my experience of vlogging like day to day and he did a wonderful job. So I'm finally getting to grips with delegating. <laughs> and yes, I'm so, so grateful to Zach for editing all of these vlogs. And then you didn't have to see me editing every day as well, which makes a big difference, I think. But yeah, and I liked having this kind of slightly more chill attitude. I think it works so much better for me and hopefully for you as well. Um, I won't be doing Vlogmas this year, it's not the plan to daily vlog. It is such a busy time of year and especially with the baby added into the mix. I think it would be good this year not to daily vlog but I would like to make some nice Christmassy vlogs so I will be on here, it won't be daily vlogging I'm afraid. But I can't believe it's November, where on earth has this year gone? I have no idea. Um, I will also be around this month, I've got my book video coming up soon so keep an eye out for that. It promises to be a good one because I read a lot of good books in the last couple of months. And yeah, thank you so much for watching my loves and I will see you again very soon. Bye!